Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for tea time. <laughs> the weekend is over, it's Monday morning. I can't believe it. So anyways guys, today we're gonna be talking about Nikon possibly releasing a Z1 or a Z5, we don't know what it's called as of yet, it's going to be a direct competitor to the Canon RP. What is Sony gonna do? I don't know, but we're gonna talk about this a little bit. But before we do, if you haven't went over to my website, jchristina.com, go give it a look-see. There's a lot of photography tools that I've made over the years. There might be something that you like. If there is, please pick it up and support me. Once again, that is jchristina.com. So, we're gonna look at this a little bit today. Rumors had it, there was some pictures out there that this is the brand new mock-up or brand new camera, the Z1 or the Z5. Um, looking at it, I think that it most likely isn't. I'm gonna show it on the screen anyway so you can see it. But we do know that an executive, an upper-end executive over at Nikon did confirm that they are making a Z, let's call it five, a Z1, whatever you wanna call it, a direct competitor to the Canon EOS RP which is important. It's very, very important to get those people in there. Now, what type of camera is it gonna be? I'm gonna guess it'll probably be something like a Z6 dumbed down, all right? So most likely it will have SD card, not XQD. It'll probably have one card slot, not two, almost definitely. It'll most likely have like a D750 sensor to kind of, reduce the cost. They could put a Z6 sensor in it, but I think it's going to really hurt sales on the Z6. Um, it probably will not have a magnesium alloy body. It'll probably be a plastic body. The same thing that Canon does with its lower end, let's call them like the Rebel line, um, where it has some magnesium, but a lot of it is just a plastic or some type of composite. They'll probably also have a reduced amount of dust and weather sealing. Um, with the camera, anything to kind of make it a little bit cheaper. But at this point, I think it's necessary. Now, why do I say that? When Canon came out with the R, I looked at it and I said, you know what, guys, they need to come out with an R, but a pro version. But even more importantly, they need to come out with an R lower end version to get people in the door. Okay, very, very important. And that's what they did, right, guys? They came out with the Canon EOS RP. Now, this is the lowest cost full frame mirrorless camera on the market, period. Now, there's been debates and I see people in the comment area all the time. They say, oh, well, you can get a Sony a7 II for a lower cost. But listen, the Sony a7 II is from 2014. I'm talking about cameras as of today. The lowest cost full frame mirrorless camera on the market is still the EOS Canon RP. Now, what they're doing and what they're doing right and what I think Canon will also do is they're both, Nikon and Canon, are going to try to bring in that entry-level market. It's very important to get new blood in the door. They've been bleeding out for so long to Sony with their A7 Mark III that at this point, they needed to come out with mirrorless full frame, which they did, but now they need to come out with something that's entry level to either keep the people that you have currently in your brand or in your lineup of cameras, full frame cameras, right? Be it the Z6 or the Z7 or the Canon EOS R or RP. The RP is what's keeping them in. The RP is what's getting the older users that are let's say rebel users to say, well, you know what, for 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks, maybe we will upgrade to the Canon EOS RP. We can use all of our lenses, they're giving us an adapter for free. So I'm gonna guess that Nikon is going to do the same thing. They'll probably give away the free adapter and then also have something that's sub $1,500. It's almost a necessity. I think that that's probably what they'll do. Remember guys, I've always said it, the big two, Canon and Nikon, are like two legs on one body. One takes a step forward, right? And then the next one takes a step forward. And then one takes a step back and so on and so forth. That's the way it's always been. Always, always, always. One and then the next, one and then the next, all right? Whereas Sony kind of beats their own drum, right? They do their own thing. They do whatever they feel is right. And 
they've been doing really well at it, right? Really well at it. So if we just look at the prices, you have the Z7 at about $3,600, the Z6 at $2,200, the Canon EOS R at $2,300, and then you get that RP, that nice number, 1300 bucks for the RP with the adapter. It just makes sense. You have the Sony A7 Mark III at about two grand, and then you have that Sony A7 Mark II that people always talk about at $1,200. And I keep saying it's, listen, the thing is from 2014. So we really can't put that into the mix. But just looking at the prices of what's out there right now, that Canon EOS RP, like I've said, is the lowest cost. And that is where everyone is going to need to be. Sub $1,500, okay? We see that the executives over at Nikon have said, you know what, this is what we're doing. We're making that entry-level mirrorless full-frame camera. We know that's coming. What it's called, we don't know. It could be a Z5 or a Z1. It really doesn't matter. My question to you guys is number one, what do you think that Sony is going to do? How are they going to respond to this low-cost, sub-$1,500 full-frame mirrorless camera? Will they and how will they? Because we've heard not much from Sony for quite some time now right? When it comes to full frame, like for example, the A7S III, we've been waiting for that forever. That's supposed to be a video beast. But at this point, I think that entry level full frame mirrorless camera is where the market is sitting. This is what people want, right? So what do you think Sony is going to do? Number one, and number two, do you think Nikon, even though the executive said that they were going to do this, do you think they will come out with that Z1 and that Z5 now in 2019? And if so, what do you think the price is going to be? Do you think they're going to make it comparable to the Canon EOS RP at $1,300 and make sure that it is sub $1,500? And as I said, include that lens adapter so that people can come on board easily. Because I think that is the most important thing today, is to get people to either stick with your brand, number one, or number two, get new people into your brand, all right? And that is where Canon and Nikon was failing for so long as people just migrated away from that platform over to Sony. They finally both have stopped the bleeding. Did they do it well? Not so much, but with their iteration one, releases of full frame mirrorless cameras, it's not bad. It's really not bad. And they did what they need to do. At this point, I do believe it's that entry level full frame mirrorless that needs to be created by Nikon. And I'm gonna guess that Sony is going to respond in light because I think they need to, I really do, but we'll see. So like I said, what do you think? In the comment area below, Put your thoughts. Let's have this discussion back and forth. Anyways, guys, as always, if you enjoy my content, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.